hath made, let us rejoice and be glad. Amen. We're truly grateful to be found once again in the house of prayer. Welcome to each and every one of you here with us in person as well as those who are joining us virtually. As always, we acknowledge that we do not own the rights to any of the music that we will be sharing in this morning's worship, but we thank God for those who share their gifts with the kingdom. That we might worship with them in spirit and in truth. And also, it's hard to believe that we're in the eighth month of the year already. So with this being the first Sunday, of course, we will be celebrating the Lord's table on today. That ultimate sacrifice that he made for us on Calvary. So we thank God for the blood, the blood that will never lose its power. So how many of us are here today to praise and worship the Holy, the Most High God? Because if he's worthy to be praised, then he does Stand to your feet and give him your best praise. Not because I ask you to, but because you know he's worthy. I can't make you pray him. I wasn't with you last night. I wasn't with you last week. But if the Lord has brought you from somewhere, let the redeemed of the Lord. So let's give glory, honor, and praise to his most holy and righteous man. Here, 34th 
Psalm 34, Psalm. And it reads as follows. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praises shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make her boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. O oh, magnify with, with him and let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord, and he heard me, and delivered me from all my fear. Amen. Amen. Yes. And they looked unto him, and what, what, and their faces were not ashamed. Nothing to be ashamed of. So this poor man cried, and the Lord heard him, and saved him of all his trouble. He saved us from a whole lot of troubles. Yes, yes. yes. And the angel of the Lord encamped around about them that fear him and delivered them. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Yes. Blessed is the man that trusts in the Lord. Oh, yes. Just keep on trusting. Yes.
We begin our worship services at 8 a.m. with prayer in the sanctuary. Anyone is invited to join. At 9.45 a.m., we begin Sunday school and worship service begins at 11 a.m. There will be no choir rehearsal or Bible study this week. The in-person and virtual 128th annual session of the Educational Missionary Baptist Association presents Launching Out Into Deeper Water. Services are August 8th through 11th, 2022 at Mount Calvary Missionary Baptist Church, 320 Gaspin Street, Alexandria, Louisiana, 71302. Please don't forget to leave your school supply blessing in the foyer. The school supply blessing will be this Saturday, August 13th, from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. This event is for all ages. Happy birthday to all who were born during the month of August, and happy yeah. anniversary to all couples who were married in the month of August. Good morning, everyone. The Kingdom Women of Hope will be meeting this month on the 20th here in the sanctuary at 10 a.m. sharp. We will begin our book study on the characteristics of a Christian worker. Sister Alicia Bush will be leading us in this study. So come on out, ladies. We're going to have a good time in the name of the Lord. Oh, yeah. 
that's a, no, no, I mean, no pressure, no pressure. I'm not asking you to get up and share your age, but we just thank God that he has granted, as some people say, a, 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 another trip around the sun.
glad the cross wasn't the end of the story? Oh, yes. Amen. Oh, yes. Yes. Aren't you glad the tomb yes. wasn't the end of the story? Yes. Aren't you glad that he got up and one day he's coming yes. back? Yes. Yes. It all started with the great love wherewith oh, yeah. he loved us. Thank God for the ministry and song today. Now I'd like to invite your attention to Genesis, the 22nd chapter. Genesis chapter number 22. And we will consider verses 1 through 14. Genesis chapter 22, verses 1 through 14. And in the King James translation, we find these words recorded. And it came to pass after these things that God did tempt or test Abraham and said unto him, Abraham. And he said, Behold, here I am. And he said, Take now thy son, thine only son Isaac, whom thou lovest, and get thee into the land of Moriah, and offer him therefore burnt offering upon one of the mountains which I will tell thee of. And Abraham rose early in the morning and saddled his ass, and took two of his young men with him, and Isaac his son, and clayed the wood for the burnt offering, and rose up and went into the place which God had told him. Then on the third day, Abraham lifted up his eyes and saw the place afar off. And Abraham said unto his young men, Abide ye here with the ass, and I and the lad will go yonder and worship and come again to you. And Abraham took the wood of the burnt offering and laid it upon Isaac his son. And he took the fire in his hand and a knife, and they went both of them together. Mm -hmm. And Isaac spake unto Abraham his father and said, My father. And he said, Here I am, my son. Mm -hmm. And he said, Behold the fire and the wood. Mm -hmm. But where is the lamb for a burnt offering? Mm -hmm. And Abraham said, My son, God will provide himself a lamb for a burnt offering. Yeah. So they went both of them together. And they came to the place which God had told him of, and Abraham built an altar there, and laid the wood in order, and bound Isaac his son, and laid him on the altar upon the wood. And Abraham stretched forth his hand, and took the knife to slay his son. And the angel of the Lord called out unto him out of heaven, and said, Abraham, Abraham. And he said, Here am I. And he said, Lay not thine hand upon the lad, neither do thou anything unto him. For now I know that thou fearest God, seeing thou hast not withheld thy son, thine only son, from me. And Abraham lifted up his eyes and looked, and behold, behind him a ram caught in a thicket by his horns. And Abraham went and took up the ram and offered him up for a burnt offering in the stead of his son. And Abraham called the name of that place Jehovah Jireh, as it is said to this day, in the mount of the Lord it shall be seen. Amen. Verse 8, and Abraham said, my son, God will provide himself a lamb for a burnt offering. And after all was said and done, Abraham said, the name of this place is Jehovah Jireh, because the Lord will provide. And that's what I want to talk about for a few moments today as we're seated in the presence of the Lord. Do I have any witnesses in the house today who know that the Lord will? Well, how do you know that the Lord will provide? He has already provided. How do you know that the Lord will provide? He's providing right now. So if he's providing in the past and he's providing in the present, then guess what? If he did it before, he'll do it again. The same God right now, the same God back then. Can we just lift up our voice and put our hands together, make some noise for the fact that God will? The Lord will. 
provide. Now we were we were talking about names or attributes of God in, in Bible study on Wednesday night, and, and there was just something about going over this Jehovah Jireh. Well, the whole thing, really, when you're talking about the Lord, when you're talking about His name, there's something about His name that will stir up something on the inside of you, and even though you might ha not have what you want to have, you might not feel like you want to feel when you just hear the name of Yahweh, when you hear the name of Yeshua, when you hear the name of the Lord, when you hear the name of Jesus, there's something that gets stirred up on the inside. But it's good to know that the Lord will provide. Uh, like we said on Wednesday night, he's a doctor in a sick room. He's a lawyer in a courtroom. He's a mother for the motherless. He's a father for the fatherless. Whatever it is that you need, God will. Now we, who have been in church any number of times, know the story of Abraham. And how God told him to get up, leave your kinfolk. Leave your country and go to a place that I will show you. And Abraham got up. God also promised Abraham that he and Sarah would have a child. Well, uh, things didn't seem to go according to Abraham and Sarah's timetable. Uh, can I just pause right now just because God doesn't provide it when you think he's going to provide. Just because God doesn't provide when I think he's going to provide. That doesn't mean that he's not going to provide. But let, lest we be too hard on Abraham and Sarah because they decided to help God out. Right. And bring Hagar into the equation. Sometimes we get impatient along this journey, waiting for God to provide. Well, maybe I'm the only one who's trying to put my hand in God's business and try to get something that God really didn't intend for me to have. And then once I got it, I wish I had never touched it because it wasn't what God So Ishmael is on the scene, but God did not change his mind about what he had promised Abraham. So when God told Abraham at the age of 100 and Sarah at the age of 99 that he still was going to take care of that promise, he was going to provide them with an heir of promise, then they laughed. Oh, okay, well may maybe we're all too holy and sanctified up in here today. But has anybody ever laughed at God? Has anybody ever gotten a word from the Lord and you just thought it was so funny that God would speak that word in your life because there was no way that God was going to use you because of where you came from? There was no way that God was going to use you because of your bank account or lack thereof? There was no way that God was going to use you because you didn't have the education or the credential and you may have laughed at God, but how many of you know that God will have the last laugh when he promised he is able. So Sarah has the son. They call him Isaac, which means laughter. And then Sarah started to get a little annoyed about the fact that Ishmael was on the scene. So she said, you have to send this bondwoman and her son away. So Ishmael and Hagar were sent away, but God still promised that he was going to bless. Oh, yeah. There was this thing going on because, you know, Ishmael as the firstborn, was, I'm sure he was thinking, well, since I'm the firstborn, I have all the rights and privileges of the firstborn. That created some tension that went, but we're, we're not going there today. So now, after Isaac has been born and Abraham and Sarah are enjoying the promise, then God decides that he's going to give Abraham a test. Now, we need to understand, when it says that God tempted Abraham, that does not mean that God was trying to get Abraham to do something evil, because God doesn't operate 
that way. There's somebody else who operates that way, but it's not God. That's why James reminds us in 1 and 13, let no man say when he is tempted that I am tempted of God, for God cannot be tempted with evil, neither tempted he any man. But God was putting Abraham to the test. Yes, Sometimes when God tests us, it's not because God doesn't know who we are. Uh, we, we do say that God is omniscient. He knows everything. He made us and he knows all about us from the crown of our head to the sole of our feet. He knows. So he already knew what Abraham was going to do. As a matter of fact, if you dig deeper into the law, in Deuteronomy chapter 12 and 31, it says, Thou shalt not do so unto the Lord thy God, for every abomination to the Lord which he hated have they, the Gentiles, done unto their God. Even their sons and their daughters they have burnt in the fire to their God. So God was saying what they're doing, that's not something I want you to do because the nature and the character of God will not allow him to bless you with a child only to offer that child as a burnt sacrifice. But yet, he tells Abraham, take your son, your Hold on, wait a minute. God said, your only son. But wait a minute, didn't we just say that Abraham had fathered? But God says, take your only son. Now see, Ishmael had left the scene, that didn't change his paternity, but Ishmael was no longer on the scene. Isaac was the <sighs> Sometimes we want God to bless our mess, All right. but God isn't recognizing our mess, but it, he is recognizing what he has given Take your only son oh, yes. to the land of Moriah. Here he goes again. He's implying that now there's going to be another family separation for Abraham. Yeah. And he's going to a place not that he knew of, but a place that God would show him. Now, for those of us who have a GPS Christianity, right. <laughs> where well, we want to punch in the destination, and get turn by turn direction. Yeah. I have some bad news for those of us who like to have control over where we're going. Sometimes God will just tell you to go and he'll let you know where you're supposed to be when you get there. Yeah. So all that we can do in that situation is trust that he will provide what we need and what we need is where we're going, even though we don't know where we're going or how to get there. Once we get there, we will find out that the Lord has provided. Amen. So after God gives the command, in verse 3, Abraham gets up and goes, just like he did in chapter 12. He got up and he went simply because God said so. Not because he had all the information, but he had enough faith in God yes, to take him at his word and to go. Uh, Abraham trusted God. And look at what he said in verse number five. He told his young men, you stay here with the donkey while I and my son go and worship. Yeah. Now he could have stopped right there. But he said, we're going to worship, but then we're coming back. But wait a minute, Abraham. God has told you to
to offer your son as a burnt offering on the altar. Now, how in the world are you going to offer him as a burnt offering and then y'all are going to come back? Uh, Abraham believed God and it was counted to him for righteousness because he believed. He said, after Isaac asked the question, apparently Abraham had already been teaching Isaac some stuff. And, and Isaac asked the question, well, I see the wood. I see the fire. But daddy, there's something missing. Where is the lamb for the sacrifice? And Abraham, trusting God, said, God will provide himself a lamb for the burnt offering. Amen. And we know that that statement is so loaded, so pregnant with possibility about the Lord providing the lamb. And I, I, I don't know if Abraham was just looking at the present situation or if the Spirit of God had opened his eyes and he was able to look down 40 and two generations and see. Uh, and then in Hebrews, the 11th chapter, the 19th verse, we see recorded that Abraham was accounting that God was able to raise Isaac up even from the dead from whence he received him in a figure. So Abraham didn't simply have enough faith to believe that God was going to provide a lamb. But he also had enough faith to believe that if he went through with this thing, then God was going to turn around. I, it, it's not in the text, but, but I, I think Abraham was seeing a but God moment. You know how we are about these but God moments. It looks like it's going to be one way, but then God turns it around, and it turns out to be something totally different than you expected it to be. Has anybody here had God to provide them with a but God moment? When the enemy counted you out, God counted you in? The referee was standing over you. Count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And just when he was getting ready to call a knockout, but God, God stepped in and got up off the mat and knocked him. Abraham believed that the Lord would provide. <sighs> but not only did Abraham trust God, but Isaac trusted Abraham. Because we see in verse number nine that Abraham built the altar, laid the wood, bound Isaac, and laid him on the altar on the wood. Nowhere in the text do we see that Isaac was kicking and screaming. That's right, that's right. Nowhere in the text do we see that Isaac was talking back to Abraham. Because I believe that Isaac saw Abraham's faith in God and when Isaac saw Abraham's faith in God, then that transferred into Isaac having enough faith to believe the same thing that his dad believed. What am I trying to tell us today? If you believe the Lord will to provide, there's somebody who's watching you. There's somebody who's watching you when you don't have food on your table, but you're still giving God the praise. There's somebody who's watching you when you don't have any money in the bank, but your bills are due, but you're still giving God the praise. There's somebody who's watching you when you're sick in your body, but instead of staying at home and having a pity party, you make your way out to the house of prayer to give God the praise. There's somebody who will see your faith. So that 
them when they go through. Then they'll know that the same God that delivered you will deliver them. If you know that the Lord will provide for you, then why in the world would you believe that he won't provide for somebody else? So Abraham obeyed, and he took the knife and raised up the knife. But as a result of Abraham's obedience, the Lord provided a ram. Because the angel said, now I know. Now, the angel might not have known, but God knew. The angel said, now I know that you fear God. How many of us, by our actions, demonstrate that if somebody sees us, if somebody sees us outside of the church house, It's easy for us to talk about how much we fear God up in here among other believers, but how many of us can go out there and the way we live our lives, somebody can look at us and say, I know. Sacrifice his 
only son. The son of promise. Although Abraham did not have to go through with sacrificing his only son. God did not have that luxury. God did go through. That's why we're celebrating this table today. Because God did go through with sacrificing his only son. You know the verse. But God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Of all the things that God has provided, is providing, and will provide, the greatest thing that God provided is salvation through his sacrifice of his only son on Calvary. Aren't you glad that we serve a God who's not going to ask us to do something? That he is in will. God asked us to be holy because God asked us to be faithful because he is. God asked us to forgive because he God will not ask us to do Now notice that lamb was caught in a thicket by his horn. By his head. Oh yeah. Come on. Before Jesus was sacrificed on Calvary. They thought they were making fun of him by taking a crown of thorns and putting it on his they thought that Jesus would be trapped by his. Uh, Isaac was on the altar. Isaac was bound. Isaac was about to die. But then the Lord provided a ram to die in Isaac's place. Uh, if I may borrow from the songwriter, I was sinking deep in sin, far from the peaceful shore, very deeply stained within, seeking to rise no more, but the master of the sea Heard my despairing cry, and from the waters he lifted me. Now safe am I. Anybody here ever been bound in sin? Anybody else been on their way to the fires of hell? But because Jesus stepped in, because God provided a lamb, just as the enemy thought that he was about to kill you, God told Satan, hold up, wait a minute. I have a ram. I have a lamb. The one who John said, Behold the Lamb of God, who taketh away the sin of the world. I'm so glad that the Lord provided. When I should have been dead, sleeping in my grave, the Lord provided. When the Lord, the Lord will provide. When we went through those different names of Jehovah on Wednesday night, I said, here's the summary of the whole thing. God is fill in the blank. The Lord will provide. Fill in the blank. You might not need what I need, and I might not need what you need, but the Lord will provide. The same God who will provide for you is the same God who will provide for me. So whatever it is you're lacking in your life right now, if you just submit yourself to the Lordship of Jesus Christ, if you just trust God enough to step out on His Word and step out in faith, whatever it is you need, the Lord 
will. Provide. But again, if we get ready to move on with our worship, as we celebrate this table, thank God that when I couldn't die for myself, when my death would have been pointless, meaningless, just when the enemy thought he had. God took his only begotten son, allowing him to go up a hill called Calvary, to be nailed to an old rugged cross, not just to die for me, but to die in my place. He died so that we might live. Thank God for Jehovah Jireh. Thank God for being a God who will provide. As we stand all over the sanctuary, and the main key is to understand that the Lord has provided salvation through faith in his son, Jesus Christ. God has done everything he needed to do. But have we done everything that we need to do? The Lord has provided, is providing, and will provide. There's a saying, you can lead a horse to water. But you cannot make it drink. The water is there. The Lord has provided. As Jesus stated in John 14, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father said by me. Paul reminded the church at Rome that all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. He also let them know that the wages of sin is death. But he didn't just stop with the wages. He also shared the gift the gift of God of eternal life through Christ Jesus. Well, how do I obtain this? Again, John 3.16 For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believeth not I heard tell of not I heard mama talk about it, not I heard daddy talk about it, not I heard the preacher talk about it, but whosoever believeth, if I confess with my mouth and believe in my heart, confess the Lord Jesus, believe that God provided that sacrificial lamb and raised him from the dead then according to Romans chapter 10, you will be saved. I was thinking about a song that I, that I heard a few years ago. And the songwriter said, don't call the roll till I get there. What would it be like if God called the roll and your name was not in the roll book. 
God, I was on the roll of Good Hope Baptist Church. I was on the roll of this church or that church. But when God calls the roll, he's not going to ask what church you were a member of. Just because my name is on the marquee outside as pastor, that doesn't mean that my name. Oh, now wait a minute, Lord. What are you talking about? Oh, I'll say. I'll, I'll finish the sentence. Just because my name is on that marquee out there, it doesn't mean that my name is on the road. But based upon a decision I made long before I even imagined my name being on the road. I remember when, when I was young in ministry, uh, under my father in the ministry, Pastor Simon, and he would all, often say, it's going to be a whole church in hell. You're going to have choir members, <laughs> preachers, <laughs> deacons, in hell. How? Because their name were on the roll of an organization. But their names were not on the roll of the organism. It's not simply a head thing. It's a heart thing. Has the Lord changed your heart? Has the Lord changed my heart? Do I know beyond a shadow of a doubt that when I'm absent from this body, I'll be present with the Lord? it seems like I'm more focused on people who are in the building during the invitation time. And I cannot leave out those who are in the building. Now, those who have never accepted Jesus Christ, those who have never set foot in the church, you can receive Jesus Christ right where you are. And don't look at church folk as your litmus test for whether or not you should be because any of you who have heard me any length of time know that I tell you if you're looking for a perfect church don't come here if you're looking for a perfect pastor don't come here but if you're looking for people who are being perfected by a perfect God then come on in let God work on you don't miss your blessing because somebody else has rejected their blessing. So, back to those who... One Bible study uh, on, on this past Wednesday, I was trying to follow the comments as they came in, but one Wednesday I went home after Bible study and I made a comment, Sister Alicia, about people faking it until they make it. And I saw where Sister Alicia commented, some people fake it. They think they've already made it. Something to that effect. They fake so long that they think they've already made it. But they haven't. Because they're still... They, don't be one of those people who fools yourself. When you behold the law of liberty, don't be as one looking in a glass. And once you walk away from the mirror, you forget. Don't be hearers only, but. You've heard it said many times, being in church doesn't make you a Christian any more than sitting in the garage makes you a.
But if you know that you know that you know, and you know that you're not thinking, and how, well, how do I know? Glad you asked. The Spirit itself, the Holy Ghost, bears witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. And when we become the children of God, then he gives us a down payment or the earnest of the Holy Spirit. He places the Holy Spirit inside of us. And then the Holy Spirit, even when we mess up, the Holy Spirit will let us know. You might have messed up, my child, but you're still. Time is running out. The signs are fulfilling every day. And this is not a scare tactic. This is a love tactic. Because the Bible says, some saved with fear, pulling them out of the fire, hating the garment that is even spotted with the flesh. We have a responsibility to let people know what they do with it once we let them know is up to them. But we have a responsibility to tell it like a T.I.E. That's why the invitation takes so long here. Because I'm not rushing through the invitation because I need people to know the real way. Jesus Christ is the way. Coming to church is not the way. If you have not accepted Jesus Christ as the way. I don't want anybody going to hell, taking a detour through Good Hope Baptist Church. I don't want to go. I, I, I know the song says, Brother Young, I'll go if I have to go by myself. And that, that's true. We, we, we're going to go. We should be determined to go if we have to go by ourselves. But at the same time, we need to try to encourage as many people to come with us. So now I'm not saying we're not going to sing that song anymore. That's not what I'm saying. Sometimes we throw songs out without looking at the intent of the songwriter. In times like these, we need a Savior. In times like these, we need an anchor. Be very sure. Be very sure. Your anchor holds and grips the solid rock. That rock is Jesus. Yes, he's the one. That rock is Jesus, the only one. Be very sure. Be very sure. Your anchor holds and grips the solid rock. If there's anyone here who's looking for a church home and the Spirit of God has impressed upon your heart to become a part of the Good Hope family, I invite you to come. Again, the emphasis is more on being a part of the body of Christ than being a member of Good Hope. But if the Lord is leading you to come here, I invite you to come. And lastly, if you need the Lord to provide something and you need us to agree with you in prayer, that the Lord will provide. You can come forward for prayer at this time. our prayer team to come forward. Sister Alicia, Sister Mia, Sister Erica.
to the point of refusing the Lord's Supper. But to make that examination, to refuse anything that would cause us to eat or drink in an unworthy manner. Jesus did not shed his blood so that we would come up with excuses for not remembering that he shed his blood. His body was not given up so that we could come up with excuses to not remember that his body was given up for us. So as the Lord has provided, his only begotten son is a sacrificial lamb. Let us prepare our hearts and our minds for this time of remembrance. Father God, we come to you right now in the name of Jesus. We thank you for this day. We thank you for being our provider. Now as we come before you to remember, remember the one who's, who was wounded for our transgressions, was bruised for our iniquities, the chastisement of our peace was upon him, and by his stripes we are healed. As we come to remember his broken body and his shed blood, Father, we ask that you will consecrate these elements, the bread and the cup that represent his body and his shed blood. Father, anything that will hinder us from eating and drinking in a worthy manner, we thank you for the blood that cleanses us. We give it to you right now, Heavenly Father, knowing 
that you have already done more than enough. So now, Father, we thank you, we praise you, we magnify you, and acknowledge all the honor and glory of the praise belong to you. For it is in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. everyone been served let us stand together Jesus gathered with his disciples in the upper room to celebrate the Passover took the bread and when he had blessed it he broke it and he said to his disciples take eat this is my body which shall be given up for you as often as you do this do it in remembrance of me let us eat together and in a similar manner when the supper was ended he took the cup and when he had blessed it he said this is my blood of the new covenant my blood which shall be shed for many for the remission of sins. As often as you eat of this bread and drink of this cup, you do show forth my suffering until I come again. As often as you do this, do it in remembrance of me. Let us drink together. And when they had sung a hymn, they went out unto the Mount of Olives. Again, we're grateful for Sister Erica's family coming to share with us on today. And, and Sister Patty, they shared with us on Tuesday night. So we thank God for that as well. This concludes our service, but not our worship. Amen. Amen. Depart in peace. The Lord and serve the Lord. I would like to say something to you all. I want to thank all of you for your prayer, your phone calls, or whatever you did in concern of the death of my significant other. The morning that she passed away, I got a phone call. I had been with her that Saturday afternoon, took a place that she wanted to go, but it never dawned upon me this would be my last time with her. We were, we were together for 33 years. And I'm going to miss her. 
because I had a ritual. Every Friday, I went to Carfax and picked her up and took her to eat. Thank all of you, and I still love you. <laughs>